and Eastern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 530. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. The National Guard is in Leslie County helping those still cut off by floodwaters. Today they put boots on the ground and a boat in the water and set out to help people in confluence get food, water, and even medical help if necessary. WYMP's Will Puckett has more. As animals roll around in the floodwaters, the men and women of the National Guard go to work. Oh, this, this is what we're here for. Equipped with a big green boat, Members of the Guard are out on the water, assisting a community stranded by floodwaters. We're here to uh, assist the emergency management team. Confluence has now been blocked off by floodwaters for more than a week, making boat travel the only way in and out. Removing people with medical conditions, um, supplying medicine to those people, and uh, delivering food for the people that can't get out. Both sides are thankful for the work the National Guard because they're doing what they love. This is what we signed up to do, and uh, and we love doing this stuff. And the people they're helping appreciate the work the men and women in uniform are doing to bring some sort of normalcy to a life turned upside down. We get thanked constantly for coming down and doing what we can to, to help the community. And in those who live here hope the water continues to drop so their lives can return to normal. In Leslie County, Will Puckett, WYMT, Mountain News. The guard is set up about half a mile closer today than they were over the weekend, a sign that the water levels continue to drop. Search and rescue crews are spending the day looking for more victims of a deadly tornado that killed at least 23 people in Lee County, Alabama. The twister was part of a system yesterday that spawned tornadoes across several states in the Deep South. CBS's Omar Biafranca reports. Rescue crews and canine units arrived in Beauregard, Alabama to search for victims after a deadly tornado touched down, causing massive devastation. We are upgrading that to an EF4, uh, estimated wind speed of 170 miles per hour. Um, that's based on uh, damage that we found to uh, a monster tornado uh, as it moved across uh, the area. Uh, early estimate, at least 24 miles long. Six-year-old A.J. Hernandez Jr. was among those killed. On social media, his aunt called him a precious little man. We lost children, mothers, fathers, <coughs> neighbors, and friends. This hurts my heart. Um, I, I, I love this county, and um, it's, it's, uh, it's extremely upsetting to me to, to see these people hurting like this. It was a similar scene in nearby Opelika. Drone footage shows nothing left but piles of debris. The same storm system also damaged homes in Talbot County, Georgia. No casualties are reported. My babies, I just covered them just like this and we're calling on Jesus. Just kept saying, Jesus, cover us, cover us, Jesus. And in Florida's panhandle, tornadoes uprooted trees. But unlike the devastation in Alabama, the homes are still standing. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Lee County, Alabama. Tornadoes killed 10 people in the United States in all of 2018. That is less than half the number of people killed in this storm. We are dealing with some cooler air across our area. We're also dealing with dry conditions. However, there is a flash flood watch out for Whitley County. Now, this is just a different scenario. This is actually through Tuesday, but the reason that this was issued was because the heavy rains that we saw really over the past couple of weeks could lead to possible dam failure. Now, this is in the Corneth Road in Little Spruce Creek drainage. This is near the Woodbine area in the north central part of Whitley County, and this is actually actually through Tuesday. Now we know emergency managers are on the way to go look at the dam and we'll definitely keep you updated on air and online as we learn more. But as we look at pinpoint Doppler, it's important to note that we are dry and are not expecting any rain really over the next couple of days. We are just expecting to see these cooler temperatures stick around. We're into the upper 20s to lower 30s, which is where most of us maxed out for the day. And sadly, I think we'll see the same conditions as we head into tomorrow. I'll have more on that coming up in just a little bit, Steve.
All right, thank you, Paige. Construction of the Visitor Center building at the Appalachian Wildlife Center in Bell County is finally underway. It is expected to take up to 20 months to complete. That Visitor Center will include two museums, a restaurant, and a gift shop, among other things. Once finished, the Wildlife Center is expected to draw 850,000 visitors a year and create more than 2,900 new jobs. We hope to have more from the site of the project tomorrow. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said at a news conference in Louisville today that it was clear the resolution of disapproval over President Trump's national emergency declaration over the border wall has enough support to pass the GOP-led chamber. I was one of those uh, hoping the president would not take the national emergency route. <clears throat> uh, once he decided to do that, I said I would support it, but I was hoping he wouldn't take that particular path. I think what uh, what is clear in the Senate is, is there will be enough votes uh, to pass the resolution of disapproval, which will then be vetoed by the president, and then in all likelihood the veto will be upheld in the House. Well, the U.S. Supreme Court is steering clear of a religious liberty case in New Jersey. Today, the high court decided not to get involved in a case that ruled against using public money to fix up churches. But the decision did not come without comment. Justice Brett Kavanaugh, joined by Justices Samuel Alito and Neil Gorsuch, said they agreed that the court should not take up this particular case because some of the facts were in dispute. But they are troubled by a lower court opinion that went against the churches. The United States has officially closed its consulate in Jerusalem, downgrading the status of its main diplomatic mission to the Palestinians by folding it into the U.S. Embassy to Israel. The announcement came from the State Department today. For decades, the consulate functioned as a de facto embassy to the Palestinians. Now that outreach will be handled by a Palestinian affairs unit under the command of the embassy. First Lady Melania Trump is taking her Be Best initiative on the road in her first solo U.S. overnight trip in an official capacity. The White House says each stop of the three-state tour is designed to highlight a key component of the First Lady's campaign. Today, the First Lady visited an elementary school in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The White House says Mrs. Trump stopped here because the school incorporates character education into its curriculum. Together, I believe we should strive to provide kids with the tools they need to cultivate their social and emotional health. The First Lady has worked to promote The First Lady's her tour wraps up on Wednesday with a stop in Las Vegas, where she'll hold a town hall on opioid addiction. A bill to allow you to carry a gun without a permit is on the verge of becoming law here in Kentucky. State lawmakers in both chambers now have easily approved the bill, and Governor Matt Bevan has said he will sign it. Garrett Weimer shows us how the process would change and why some still think it's a bad idea. Any firearms instructor will tell you deciding whether or not to use your gun to defend yourself is a decision with consequences that could last a lifetime. But instructors say lawmakers here in Frankfurt were too quick on the trigger for SB 150. Basically just giving them a license to carry to kill. It's kind of scary. Latrice Cannon is a certified instructor for folks in Kentucky wanting to get their concealed carry permit. Right now, there's a several-step process to get it. This is a handout from Kentucky State Police showing everything involved, including training and a $60 fee before you get your license. If you have to use it, you need to know how to disarm it. You need to know how to operate it, you know how your weapon works. Um, just carrying a, a gun and you know nothing about it detrimental. Cannon says training focuses on basics like making sure folks know how to correctly hold, use, and clean a weapon, plus show that they can use it. Advocates of the permitless carry bill point out that right now folks can already openly carry guns without training. It recognizes the Second Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. That's really it. It doesn't break new ground. Governor Bevin told us Friday he intends to sign the bill into law despite opposition from several organizations like the Kentucky Fraternal Order of Police and Moms Demand Action. This is the greatness of America. There are things that happen all the time that people don't like, but the, the way a democratically elected government works is ultimately the people's voice gets to be heard. We should note the bill does not get rid of the current licensing process, so if you still want to go through training and pay for your permit, you can. You would still need a permit if you want to conceal carry in other states that recognize Kentucky's permit and do require a license. At the Capitol, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. 
And when the, if and when the governor signs the bill into law, and he is expected to do that, it would take effect 90 days after lawmakers adjourned at the end of March. So in this case, it means the law would go into effect this summer. A 1990s heartthrob has died at 52. Actor Luke Perry suffered a stroke last week and died this morning. According to a statement by his publicist, Perry was surrounded by his family when he died. Perry portrayed Dylan McKay on Beverly Hills 90210 during the 90s and had many other roles since. At the time of his death, he starred on the CW series Riverdale. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, why one barber is giving free haircuts to the homeless in Manchester. And we are finally starting to see the sunshine come out. And the good news is we are going to see that continue as we head into the next couple of days. But we are also going to continue those cooler temperatures. And we have the possibility for those rain chances return by the end of the week. Coming up on Mountain News at 6, family and friends gather to remember a Perry County murder victim. And the man accused of killing him appears in court.